Make sure he's dead. He's dead. Unlimited power! Commander Shepard, come on down! You're the next contestant on We're Killing You! name on it he overheated my freaking stupid sniper rifle it's not going down oh it is what a freaking douchebag it's one of his powers he can just overheat your weapons randomly oh wow he's doing the spider thing um oh, fuck god damn it kaboom Kaboom! 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 I'm gonna throw Oreos at you until you die, motherfucker! <laughs> the car is just like, I gotta shoot this bitch! Man, he's all over the damn place. Stop! Stop it! Yeah. Never. <laughs> Be really hilarious. That was Shepard's actual dialogue during that fight. She's like, "Hey, quit! Stop! What are you doing? Making a mess." Sovereign's too strong. We have to pull back. Negative. This is our only chance. Take that monster down, no matter what the cost. Admiral Hackett is a fuck me. Damn it, you little bitch. Oh, he just fell out of the sky. Yeah, all of his shields back. Ugh. I'm gonna snipe you. I'm gonna snipe you in the butt. Oh God, Tally's dead. Oh god, oh god, oh god. This might be harder than I thought. <laughs> that did something to him. Oh god. And now he's on fire and leaves. Yay, we did it. I think. Okay, guys, this is a pretty fun prank, right? All right. Well, I'm going to I'm going to go home now. No hard feelings and you know. Fun roughhousing. <laughs> Jamie D Jamie Kennedy is going to come out any out. second now. Man, the look on your faces when I attacked your whole fleet. Killed everybody, man. That's pretty good. But we're all good now, right? You know, it was just you know, just play time, right? So many vessels. Hard on my flank. We're going in. I know somebody who wants to be hard on Joker's flank. What? I don't know. I just thought it would sound dirty. 
I don't know exactly why he did that, because everyone was already attacking it, and he was just like showing off, basically. Oh. <laughs> he was like, hard on my flank, and you well, look down and everyone's the... kind of like just doing their own thing. Well, maybe the Normandy's uh, weapons are most effective at close range. Oh god. For a second I saw the blonde hair and I was like, if that's Conrad, <laughs> I'm never gonna live this shit down. Take it easy. It's over. You're safe now. Where's the commander? climbed all the way up on that thing. It hurt like hell. The smug look feels good, though. <laughs> Ambassador, Captain, Commander Shepard. We have gathered here to recognize the enormous contributions of the Alliance forces in the war against Sovereign and the Geth. Many humans lost their lives in the battle to save the Citadel. Brave and courageous soldiers who willingly gave their lives so that we, the Council, might live. There is no greater sacrifice, and we share your grief over the tragic loss of so many noble men and women. The Council also owes you a great personal debt, Commander, one we can never repay. You saved not just our lives, but the lives of billions from Sovereign and the Reapers. Commander Shepard, your heroic and selfless actions serve as a symbol of everything humanity and the Alliance stand for. And though we cannot bring back those valiant soldiers who gave their lives to save ours, we can honor their memories through our actions. Humanity By acknowledging that the Reapers exist. And protector of the galaxy. If only. You have proved you are worthy to join our ranks and serve beside us on the Citadel Council. Counselor, on behalf of humanity and the Alliance, we thank you for this prestigious honor and humbly accept. We will need a list of potential candidates to fill humanity's seat on the Council. Given all that has happened, I am sure your recommendation will carry a great deal of weight, Commander. Do you support any particular candidate? Anderson. We need someone with the courage to stand up for what he believes in. Someone like Captain Anderson. Him? You must be joking. Anderson prefers to let his fists do the talking. Only with you, Ambassador. Only with you. <laughs> are you sure about this, Commander? The captain's a soldier, not a politician. I'm not the. the I'm not picking you. I'm not you. picking you. That I pick you. Yeah, that's the point. We've already got too many politicians on the Citadel. The captain would be perfect for this job. I think it's an inspired choice. The council would welcome him with open arms. Should he accept? I'm honored, Counselor. As humanity's representative, I'll do everything in my power to help the council rebuild. Sovereign's defeat marks the beginning of a new era for both humanity and the Council. I got some work to do, though. Don't start patting yourselves on the back just yet. Sovereign wasn't alone. The rest of the Reapers are still out there, and I'm gonna find some way to stop them. Shepard's right. Humanity is ready to do its part. United with the rest of the Council, we have the strength to overcome any challenge. 
When the Reapers come, we must stand side by side. We must fight against them as one. And together, we will drive them back into dark space. The rest of the council's just like... Reapers? <laughs> uh... Are you sure? Also, Shepard, you're in outer space and you're not wearing a helmet. You're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> you're literally going to die. Casey Hudson, good job. All right, so the uh, this is almost a complete inversion of my playthrough, like the choices I made in the motion comic for Mass Effect One. I think the only difference there's two major differences actually. There's two major differences. Um, oh no, not differences, similarities. There's there's only one similarity that I can think of, and that is um, you let the Rachni Queen go, and so did I. Yeah. There's two major differences, though, between what I think I did and what I think you did. What? Um, There's a lot more than that. First of all, Captain Anderson is on the council instead of Udina. Correct. Um, second, Rex is alive. Yes. Also, oh. the council's alive. And um, you're a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. You killed the so ca I, council. I killed the council and I let Caden die. I let Ash live. But I didn't romance Ash or Liara. Okay. Um, because I didn't know who the characters were at the time. So, like, in the motion comic, it was like, you know, you have to pick between this woman or this woman. And I had a third option, which was just be professional and just not develop romantic relationships. And I'm like, well, if I'm the captain of this ship, I'm definitely not going to want to romance a crew member. So I picked neither. So I didn't have a romance carried over from one. And then when I got to know my crew better, I ended up romancing one of my crew in two. So I completely went back on my original decision just because I actually became attached to somebody That's um, and I, I decided that to hell with protocol um, this is worth pursuing all right so that's so there's four major differences yeah then. um the romantic option yeah we're romancing Caden in this playthrough um, whereas I'm not even used to Caden being around so this is gonna be really interesting to see how Rex and Caden like interact for the you know next couple of games. I'm not sure um, if or when the next part of this playthrough is going to come, actually, because mm -hmm. I'm going to be moving tomorrow. We we pushed the series out um, th the last half, like, past... Starting at Novaria, actually. to no From Novaria to the end of the game, we pushed the series out and recorded all of it in the span of, like, four, four days. Four days. Um, and that was it was a lot of filming and so if our commentary got dry at some points that was kind of why um but i'm gonna be in california and jim's gonna be on the other side of the country <laughs> in about maybe a month so i'm not really sure how we're gonna keep the series going between you being here or not um but we'll figure that out later i think yeah you've got other games I do. There will be other games. We've got a lot of stuff to do. Um, if there's a way we can make this work, I'm really excited to continue it. Um, the only way I can think of to make it work uh, with us being across the country from each other would be to have um, Hitbox stream. Because Hitbox's lag is only five seconds. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. That's how we recorded uh, Dark Souls 2 with Voldex. Is something would happen and I'd giggle and Voldex would be like, what? And then, like, it's two seconds later, you'd be like, yeah, oh, the, okay. The only thing that makes it inconvenient to record over a stream of any kind is I'm not going to be able to give the snappy, um, you know, MST commentary. I'll still be able to, like, give commentary, but it won't be timed. I won't be able to make those kinds of jokes. Well, it'll it'll basically come down to you won't be able to uh, to make them while they're talking but after they get through talking you can make as many as you want because that'll only be within a few seconds so yeah. it should be fine it should be fine i love this ending theme it feels like an old 80s movie yeah it's I, it's by the fonts actually and i had this song as my ringtone for a really long time it is also copyrighted as fuck so anyone watching <laughs> this will not be able to hear it 
Super copyrighted. Oh. Super crazy copyrighted. Oh, Lex Lang was in this game. He voiced Luthor in uh, the DCAU. Dwight Schultz? Reginald Barkley? They ha so they had three... They had at least three Star Trek voice actors in this game. Motion capture done by Giant Studios. And I'm not entirely sure Lex Lang wasn't in Star Trek at some point. Maybe even Keith David. I'm gonna have to look that up. It's a pretty good game. Pretty good game. Um, it's a lot more... It's a lot different compared to the other two. Yes, it is. Um, but I like that. I, I kinda... like that they're all different in their own ways. Yeah. Like... Two and they three all feel have very things... similar, but... Yeah, two and three have more in common than one, but... Um... The, the narrative feel of the games is all different. Like, it's the same general story, but you take it at different times at different angles. And, you know, the, it doesn't feel so much the same that you're bored and you come to expect what comes next and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, the... Um, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> Oh, um, the the weapon system, the super simplified weapon and equipment system and stuff, um, I agree it was too simple in, in two, but I'm glad that they got, that they did not make it as complex as one, yeah. in two and three, because this is, I, I'm watching you do this stuff and managing your inventory, and it took me forever to really figure out how you were determining what was good or whatever. Like, besides the fact that they had numbers. I didn't even everything. bother explaining it because it's just so complicated. It's It, it basically just boils down to... I, I mean, I wasn't really min-maxing because I didn't want to, like, hold the playthrough up for that. I did most of that off-camera. Uh -huh. But you basically um, just use whatever you think is best from a damage standpoint until later in the game when you get Spectre weapons. And the second you get Spectre weapons, those are all automatically the best weapons mm. you should be using at all times. So it throws the choice out the window, um, except for armor. And the only reason I had those health things on Liar and Tally is because they don't have health regeneration otherwise. Which okay. is that's a big deal because yeah. otherwise they don't regenerate health on their own. Yeah. Um. The the leveling system for Charm and Intimidate. Like you have your Paragon and Renegade meters, but you can also level up. Charm and Intimidate based on your Renegade and Paragon meters. Yeah. So, how does one... Like, how does the game determine your conversational successes? Is it solely determined by your levels in the stat, in your ability for Charm and Intimidate? Yeah, it's, it's determined by the levels. What those bars do is they unlock the ability to keep getting levels. Okay, so the bars, the bars themselves aren't important for the dialogue options. They are. I mean, I'm sorry, they don't directly influence the dialogue options. They just open a pathway for you to level up your charm or intimidate to in order get to be, yeah. the dialogue options it's, to work. It's a twofold system. You get points in Paragon and Renegade, which allows you to uh, get higher ranks of charm and intimidate, mm -hmm. but you still have to put points in charm and intimidate to actually get yeah. the dialogue options. Okay. Um, I'm glad also, they simplified that in 2 and 3. Also in this game, um, your Charm and Intimidate allow you to have better shop. Oh, business. really? Yeah. Um, you you might have noticed I had a shit ton of money at the end of this game. The reason I did was because I had maxed Charm okay. and Intimidate for buying stuff. And I could have probably gotten more money, honestly, but I didn't really bother with it. Mm. It's whatever. Anyway, that was the game! Yay! I'll see you guys next time. Later.